What's up everyone? April here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how we can build in a colorblind mode for our Power Apps Canvas applications. This is building on my Power Wordle series. And we have a lot to unpack here and a lot we can learn. Just by this simple concept, we can learn about user personalization, accessibility, and tweaking the UI. We'll see how it's done right after this. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be building. If I run this Power World application, you see in the upper right hand corner, I have a settings icon. When I click on this settings screen, I have a few different things that I can configure. This screen that you're seeing here is an example of user personalization. User personalization is just a way for us as app makers and app designers to give our end users, the people actually using the application, a way to really customize the application to their needs. So there are many aspects to user personalization. It could be as simple as showing a welcome message and pulling in the user's name, maybe their profile picture, just to personalize it to that extent. But also what we're seeing here is a great example of that personalization, giving our users a way to maybe toggle between a light and a dark theme, like I showed on my previous video. And what we're gonna be talking about today, giving the users a way to toggle between a normal mode and a colorblind mode. So not only is this giving users a way to personalize the application to their needs, it's addressing accessibility. We should always be designing our applications with accessibility in mind. And there are nearly 300 million men and 15 million women worldwide who have colorblindness. That's a big accessibility thing that we can easily address inside of our Power Apps applications. So I'm giving my users a way to personalize how they want the app to look when they load it with this setting screen. So if I toggle it back to the default settings, I'll show you what the app looks like. So I'll play a word like say power. And after I play a word and press enter, it's going to color code the boxes based off of what I entered. If the word is in the correct location or if it's in the word with the wrong location or if it's not in the word at all. Now this is great for someone like me who doesn't have any color blindness but what if I did experience colorblindness? Would I be able to tell that there's a difference here between the shades to know what's going on and properly use this application? Now, the first thing you might be asking here is, well, how do I know if I don't have colorblindness, what my application would look like for someone with colorblindness to even know what to change or if it needs to be changed? Well, there are a few ways that you can do this. I believe Windows has some built-in colorblind simulator features in it. One of the ways that I tend to do this is with this simple site here. And I'll put a link to this site in the video description. It's just color-blindness.com. And what it allows you to do is upload an image and it allows you to simulate what it would look like with different types of color blindness. So looking at this default image here, this is what it looks like normally without any color blindness. But if I change it here to have kind of a red weakness here for color blindness, you see how drastically that image changes. So what I'll do when I'm building an application is I'll actually go and I'll take a screenshot of the Power App. Now there are three main colors that I have going on in this application. I have the black color if it's wrong, I have the yellow if it's in the wrong location, and then green as you see here, I just guessed the correct word. That's if all the words are in the correct spot. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually do a screenshot of the application as is with all of the different colors that I have in the mix, and I wanna run it through this colorblindness simulator. So I can upload the file that I just took a screenshot of, and I can see all my colors here, what it would look like without any colorblindness issues. And now what if I put this on the green setting? So what if someone has a colorblindness to green? I have green in my app, so I suspect there's probably gonna be an issue here. And there you go, you see as soon as I change that, it's really hard to tell the difference between the green and maybe the gray or the yellow. It's, it's very subtle. So I might want to make some tweaks here to make the differences between the shading really stand out. Now let's look and see how I'm doing the color coding. Now the formula that we're gonna look at here is going to be a little bit complex just given what this app is doing and I have a lot going on behind the scenes to do some of this color coding, but we'll get the basics down. So if we look at one of these boxes and I go to its fill setting in the properties pane, I'll expand out my formula bar and we'll take a look at the PowerFX formula that I have that's doing the color coding. Now the first thing I'm doing here is I need to check to see if I've pressed enter and submitted the word for the row. And that's being done with a collection called collection row one submitted. So I know if that collection is empty, then a word hasn't been submitted. So I actually want the background of these boxes to be transparent. 
If it's not though, this is when I need to go and do the color coding that we're seeing in the application. So if it isn't blank, I'm going to go look up to the word that I submitted and get the letter in the correct location that I'm in. Once I have that, I'm going to do a switch and this is where the color blind mode comes into play. I have a variable that you see that I'm switching on called var colorblind. Now where's that coming from? Let's take a look real quick. If we go back to that setting screen, you see I had a toggle here that said colorblind mode. So this toggle, if we look at the tree view, is called toggle colorblind mode. And if we go into the properties pane in the left hand side and we go to the on check option, you see what I'm doing here is I'm using a context variable using the update context formula. And I'm setting this context variable called var colorblind to true. So I want to trigger on what this value is to set the colors of my boxes. So now if we look at this formula again for this first box, it'll make a lot more sense. So with my switch, I'm gonna tell it what am I switching on. In this case, it's my var colorblind variable. Then I'm going to say, okay, what's the value? So if it is false in this case, and then I tell it, what do I wanna have happen? Now you'll see I'm actually nesting some switches. And this is because we had to have different color coding based off of what the outcome was. Is the letter correct and in the correct spot? Is it correct in the wrong spot? Or is it not in the word at all? So this is the switch that you're seeing here. So if we're not in colorblind mode, these are the color values that I wanna have in those spots. So you see if it's correct, I want it to be green. And one of the things I love about the Power Apps formula bar is you get a live preview as you're seeing here of the colors so I can tell what that color is. If it's not in the word at all, we're gonna go with this gray. And if it's just in the wrong spot, we're gonna go with this yellow. But if we do have our colorblind mode on, which we're doing here, so if var colorblind is true, now you can see we're gonna switch out these colors. We're going to, instead of using a green, we're going to use this orange color. We can keep the gray, but for the wrong spot, we're gonna change it from a yellow to a sky blue. And that's really all there is to it to change the colors. So we can have the same concept of switching on that variable and changing the colors of our different objects in our app throughout the application to adjust and really tweak your application for a colorblind mode. So now if we play the app, so I'm gonna go back to my settings here, we're gonna switch it to the colorblind mode. Now you see those colors change. Now, did this actually work? Well, let's run it through our colorblind simulator again. I'm gonna take another screenshot. We're gonna go open this new file here. So there's the normal mode with the blue and the orange. And now you see as we move through each of these different colorblind simulations, we can easily see a distinct difference among all the options. So we know that this application is good to go and it's accessible. Now, what I just showed you, every time a user loads up the application, they would have to go into the settings like we just saw and change that up every time. So when we're talking about building in a colorblind mode and adding in user personalization, oftentimes we might wanna take this a step farther. What if we don't wanna to have to make our users choose these settings each time they load the app? What if we wanna save the settings? Well, we can make a small tweak to this to allow our users to save these settings and cache those. The only thing that we have to do here is decide on where do we want to save this user settings data. So it can be really in whatever data source of your choice is. I would use the data source that you're already using for your application. So if it's in Dataverse, go with a new Dataverse table to store those user settings. Or if it's in SharePoint or some other database, go with that. Now in the case of my Wordle application, it's more for personal use and enjoyment. So I'm probably going to go with Excel to store this information. So what I did is on my OneDrive, I created a new Excel file. I have formatted this as a table and I've added a few columns of information. Mainly, I just wanna store the user's name or email address. And I wanna have a column for whether they chose colorblind mode, dark mode, or hard mode. Now all I have to do is add this into my Power App. So we're going to select our data tab here in the tree view. We're going to add data and search for Excel. So we're going to add from Excel online. We'll go to OneDrive for business. Then we'll select this Power Wordle user settings spreadsheet. And here's the table I created called user settings. So we'll connect this and add this into our Power App. Now that we have that in there, we need to tweak the settings screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll copy this reset button and we'll create a new button based off of this. And instead of reset, we're gonna rename that to save. And just so there's no confusion, let's change the color of this. Let's see, let's do this bright blue. And now on the on selected, this is where we need to write out to our Excel spreadsheet what settings the user has configured here. The first thing that we'll actually wanna do here is go look up in our Excel workbook and see if a record already exists for the current logged in user. And to do that, we're gonna use the if function and we're going to use is blank. And then with inside the is blank, we wanna do a lookup. 
So I wanna point it to our user settings workbook. Now I have to tell it what condition, how am I filtering this lookup to return a single item? So I wanna look up where my user column equals, and we're going to use the user function inside of Power Apps. So we're gonna do user open and close parenthesis dot, and we wanna compare on the email. So I'm not comparing on the full name, just because there could be an instance where there's multiple people playing that have the same name. So email should be unique, and we're gonna match on that. So I'll close out my is blank. So now that completes this part of the function. So if that is blank, meaning that I don't have a record in there with user settings stored for this user, now I wanna create one. Now how do we create one? Well, we're gonna use a function called patch. And patch lets us write data back to a database. So inside the patch, I'm going to point it again to our data source of our user settings. And with the patch, we can use it both to add new records into a database or update existing records. So how do we distinguish in the patch statement if we're adding a new one or updating? Well, for a new one, we can put in, in this second option here, defaults, then pass in the name of your data source. And that tells it that this should be a new record. Now we have to tell it what data to actually put inside of this table. Now to do this, we're going to do an open and a close squiggly bracket. Now we need to map the columns in our workbook to the data that we want to store in it. So the first column we have is user. And the IntelliSense should pop up with a suggestion of a matching column name, as you see it's doing here. So rely on that to make sure that you're getting the right names. So to separate out the column name and the data that we're storing into it, we're going to separate that with a colon. And now we pass in the value. So I'm going to use our user open and close parenthesis dot email to put that in that column. And then I'm going to do a comma so I can add data into another column. And you see when I do that, it's suggesting the other columns that I have inside of that table. So the next one I have is our colorblind option. So what I wanna set this to is the value of my colorblind toggle. So I'm gonna type in toggle, and we see there is our toggle colorblind mode. I'm gonna do a dot, and I'm going to get the value of that, and that value is a true or false value. So that'll output that into my column there. And we'll just finish this out for our dark mode. So we'll do toggle theme dot value. And then lastly, hard mode, which is toggle hard mode dot value. So we'll close out that patch. And now the only other thing that we have to do is do the update option. So if they do have a record in there already and they're updating their settings, we need to handle that. And to do that, we can actually take this same patch statement that we just wrote out, copy that, and we'll do a comma, paste that in. And the only thing that we're gonna change here, and let me uh, format this so we can see it a little bit better, is we're gonna change this section here, the default user settings. So instead of putting default user settings, we're going to reuse this lookup that we did. And we'll paste that in there. And that will find the matching record and update it accordingly. Now there's only one more thing that we have to do to tie this all together and get these saved values. Now when the user loads the application, we need to be able to do a lookup, see if they have user settings saved in the Excel workbook, and if so, change the app settings accordingly. So I'm going to copy this same is blank lookup function that we have. We'll copy this top part, the if and the is blank and the lookup, but not the patch. And what we wanna do is we wanna go into our tree view on the left-hand side and click on the app option on the top left-hand corner. And then in the properties panel on the top left, we're gonna change it to on start. This is where we can put in some formulas that will run when the app is initially loaded. And you see I have some other code going on here on the on start. We're just gonna to scroll to the bottom and in here, this is where you wanna do a lookup to see if those user settings exist. So I'm gonna paste in what we copied from our save button. And now this is where we're going to use some global variables. Now you might've recalled here on the toggle, we were using a context variable to set a variable called var colorblind to true or false based off of what we selected. Now when we're running code in the on start, we can't use context variables, we need to use global variables. So one of the things I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna swap this out to instead of using a context variable, we're gonna use a global variable. So we'll do set for our colorblind comma true and no squiggly brackets. So this will change the type of variable this is because we want to reuse this in our on start. So we're gonna change that there on the on check and also on the on uncheck. And I'm gonna do the same for our theme. So let's change that to a global variable as well. And now we'll go back to our on start and reference those. So if this is blank and there's no user settings, then I'm going to default these values. So the var theme, I want the default option to be light. So we'll use our set variable there. And for our var colorblind mode, I want the default value to be false. 
If it isn't blank though, I want to look up those settings. So I'm going to copy the same lookup. And this time we're going to set our var theme to the lookup, but after the lookup, we're gonna do a dot and we're going to get, in this case, the dark mode value. And we'll do the same thing to our var colorblind mode. We'll copy that lookup and we'll set it to the dot colorblind. And that's basically it. And now it's time to test it out. I have opened up the Power App as a regular user, so outside of the edit mode, and we're gonna run it and we're gonna try to apply the settings. So I'm gonna click on the gear here. I'll change it to default to a dark theme and colorblind mode. And we'll click save to apply those settings. So I should see everything has changed over here. And now if I open up the Excel file, I'll just verify that those settings did get saved. So I see that it's putting my email in the user field. Colorblind is set to true. Dark mode is set to dark. And hard mode is set to false because I didn't configure that. So it should mean if I put in a word here, should be applying my colorblind settings, which I see it is because it has the blue. Now the true test is if I close out of the application and I open it back up, will it get those settings? And I see that it did, it opened up in dark mode instead of light mode. So our user personalization and our accessibility dark mode settings are being configured. So that's all that I have for you today. Hopefully you found this useful and it gave you some ideas of how to implement accessibility and user personalization into your Power Apps applications. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and share with your friends. And if you wanna learn more about how I implemented the dark mode feature in this application, be sure to check out this video I have on that and be sure to check out this playlist for more Power Apps user interface and accessibility tips and tricks. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.